This is the Stephen Hayes Podcast. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Tunnel Vision Sports. You can find this podcast and all of our other podcasts on the TVS Network. It is Monday, another great day, another great episode. It's a beautiful day. Uh, if you're alive, be thankful. If you're able to hear this, be thankful. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you hot fire. No, nah, but... Uh, Again, you know, appreciate everyone who listens, appreciate everyone who listens, not just to my show, but everybody's podcast that we have on the TVS network. It truly means a lot to us. Um, of course, don't forget to check out our website, tvsportsmag.com for all of your games, insights, everything that we have. We have a lot of great content on there. Um, of course, on this podcast, if you would like to question anything that I'm saying, make a comment about anything that I'm saying, you can always send it to hello at the shpod.com and I will be sure to respond without hesitation. Now, now that I got that out the way, I wanted to talk about something that, you know, when it, when it comes to sports, I think sometimes people get lost in. And I think sometimes if you're, if you're a sports fan of a particular team, and your team is just not fortunate enough to be winning, then you will take whatever you get. So whether that's in the NBA, if you, the East or the West, you will take a playoff berth or a semi-conference champ, uh, uh, semi-conference appearance or Eastern Conference appearance or Western Conference appearance. Um, that's that's not me. You know, for me, it's a it's a Game of Thrones. You know, pun intended, clearly, but it's a Game of Thrones. Um. You got to so I'm a I'm a an NBA I'm a Laker fan and a Warriors fan and I've been those fans for a very very long time. No bandwagon here. If you know me, then I don't switch up sides. You ain't never heard me sitting there screaming, you know, I like the Heat or the Cavs or whatever. No, that's not who I am. That's not how I get down. Um in the in the NFL, Green Bay Packers all day. That's that's it. I used to um occasionally root for the Seahawks, but this was before the Russell Wilson days, this was the Matt Hasselback days when, when they had a, a cold receiving core. Um, can't remember none of those guys' names, but this this it was back in those days when they had Sean Alexander at the running back, you know, just tearing up the field. You know, it was back in those days. Um, and then the in the MLB Major League Baseball, I'm a Yankee fan, you know, and I'll I'll always be a Yankee fan. So, you know, um, but. If you're going to root for a team, it's a game of thrones. You got to understand that, you know, um, champions, there's a such thing as championship DNA. And a lot of people who don't, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a fair weather fan, if you're just a casual fan, like you will root for a team. I hate when people say, oh, I'm tired of this team winning, you know, um, I want to see somebody else get a turn. What, what kind of crap is that? Like that's that's like you being at your job, being at whatever wherever you work, and you. No, nah, I'm tired of getting promotions or whatever the case may be. I'm tired of moving up the ladder. And let somebody else get a chance. Like, I don't understand that. Like, your mentality in life should be to accomplish, to win championships, to to accomplish, to to get to the ultimate goal, to accomplish the ultimate goal. You know, whatever that is for you, that should be your your whole thing you know there's no such thing as for me you know not this, this is just for me there's no such thing as oh i'm tired of succeeding in this you know um i'll i'll let somebody else have a turn you know no um you know i, I want it all cash money socks and draws you know what i'm saying like it's it's success at the same time being successful does not consume me I want this for me, for my family. This is not for me as in like, I'm not going to, you know, the success, the legacy that I'm building is not for me. It's for my children and their children and their children and my nieces and my nephews and so on and so forth, you know, because the, the ultimate success, you know, I probably won't be around to see, you know, and I'm not saying that like, you know, hopefully I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, but that's what I'm building this for. You know, for the ultimate success and the ultimate appreciation for you to be able to sit back and say, man, 
what Steve did with Tunnel Vision Sports, you know, this was this way or the way he did it that way. Like I might, I'm, I might not be around to hear that, and that's fine because I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for my children. I'm doing it for, like I said, for their children, for my nieces, for my nephews, you know, and 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 to make this thing generational. That's what I'm doing it for. So don't you can miss me with that. That you know, um, I want to see another team succeed. I'm tired of seeing them win. No, no, no. That's 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 some weird mentality you got there. That's that's not what I'm on. Now, I want to I want to mention this. So we'll we'll start with with the MLB. Like I said, I'm a New York Yankee fan. Um, the New York Yankees have 27 World Series wins. Uh, Second to them is the St. Louis Cardinals with 11. Okay. In the NFL, um, the Green Bay Packers have 13 wins. I'm trying to hopefully hope, hopefully my Packers can get that to 14, but whatever. They have 13 um, Super Bowl championships. Um, the Chicago Bears come in second at nine. The New York Giants come in at eight. And New England Patriots come in at six. And tied with the Steelers, I'm sorry, at six. And then you have... Um, like Super Bowl winners. So the Green Bay Packers have the most NFL championships, but the 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 New England Patriots have, and the Pittsburgh Steelers have the most Super Bowls. You know, of course, when they uh, switched it over. So the Patriots were six, tied with the Steelers. Cowboys at five, 49ers at five, Packers at four. I'm trying to get that to five. Hopefully, we can get that. Um, the Los Angeles Lakers and the and the Boston Celtics tied a piece with 17. You know, stuff like that matters. The Golden State Warriors with six, the Chicago Bulls with six, the San Antonio Spurs with five in the NBA. Like stuff like that makes a difference. Stanley Cup winners, the most, uh, the Canadians, the Maple Leafs, the Red Wings, the Canadians at 23, the uh, Maple Leafs at 13, the Red Wings at 11, the Bruins at six, and the Blackhawks have six. Stuff like that matters. You know, it's about championships. It's a game of thrones. Which is why Golden State is up 3-0 in this series after last night's win. Taking it 109, I believe it was 109 to 100. Um, I've always felt like if Luka has to put up 40, Dallas is in trouble. I feel that way about Jimmy Butler as well. Because Jimmy Butler, as good as he is an offensive player, obviously he's well he's very, very impactful on the defensive end. So when Jimmy Butler is going for 40, he's not... I'm not saying he's not doing a lot on defense. I'm just saying it's taking away some of the defensive effort that he brings night after night. With that being said, it's a game of thrones. Everybody who was saying Dallas was going and Dallas might get a game. They might get game four Tuesday. They might. They very well could. Wouldn't shock me at all. Golden State sometimes likes to play with their food and and you know try to go and do it in front of their home crowd. But but th th this particular um, situation, I feel like. They might close it out because they don't want to. They want some rest. They don't want to, you know, extend this series longer than they have to. Championship pedigree, championship DNA. When people talk about youth, no, youth come. Youth is a factor, but experience matters more than youth. And you have to have the experience in order to to know how to navigate through the obstacles that's going to come your way when going after a sports championship or in in life in general. But experience teaches you things the mavericks have not thrown anything at the warriors that the warriors have not seen if the warriors go on to win this series whether it's five one whether it's four one uh whether it's a sweet four oh whatever the case may be this will be their i believe the sixth appearance in the nba final since 2015 championship pedigree a lot of people felt they couldn't do it you know, a lot of people felt like um, they didn't have the right mixture. They thought Phoenix was going to, you know, and a lot of people forget. And this is to Patrick Beverly's um, great analysis on ESPN. He, he reminded everybody the Phoenix Suns said this is only the second year in the playoffs. It doesn't matter what Chris Paul brings in an experience. Chris Paul has never let the last year was his first time at the NBA finals ever. So, you know, that's not a knock. I'm just saying, like, experience plays a factor. So when Chris Paul wasn't shooting well um, against the Dallas, against the Mavericks and then Devin Booker wasn't able to get his shot, you had nobody else who knew how to go out there and take that experience level and go. So, 
you know, it's championship pedigree. I, that's why I wholeheartedly felt like the Warriors would have beaten the, the Phoenix Suns. I don't I don't care what anybody says. It's, they would have. Now, let's talk about some stats real quick from last night's game. Like I said, the Warriors beat uh, the Mavericks 109-100 to go up 3-0 in the series. Um, Jeremiah Green with 10. Andrew Wiggins with 27-11. and 11. Steph Curry with 31-11. and 11. Uh, Clay Thompson with 19 came up cl and clutch in the second half. Uh, man, it was just you know, and a credit Jordan Poole off the bench with 10 hit some clutch shots. Um, Andrew Wiggins was clearly the star of the night, being aggressive, being you know, very you know, uh, on attack mode, you know, posterized Luca on a nasty uh dunk. It was a very, very disrespectful dunk. But being in Golden State helps Andrew Wiggins because Andrew Wiggins, even though he has not won a championship and he's not been far in the playoffs, he's he has learned championship pedigree. He has learned championship DNA because he's taught that by the coaching staff of the Warriors, headed by Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, and Kevon Looney. And of course, Kevon Looney, I don't care who, what you say, if I'm a GM, give me Kevon Looney all day, every day. He's a... A big who knows how to star in his role, who knows his role and plays his role very well. Um, again, Andrew Wiggins with 27 and 11, man. And those that's just the points. But the stuff that he did all night, the stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, you know, um, the rebounding that he did. Golden State had 14 offensive rebounds, which is huge. You know, I, th I think a lot of the stuff that they did, you know, um, really messed with. They shot 46%, almost, I'm supposed to say 47 from the field, 46.9, um, 34 from three. Golden State was 11 to 32 from three. Dallas was 13 to 45. Everyone feels like Golden State is a three point shooting team, and they feel like, okay, well, the way I could beat them is by outshooting them. You're not going to outshoot the Warriors. You're just not. You're not going to outshoot the Warriors. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to win because the Warriors know how to win without three points, three point shots. They could take it inside. You know, they did that in game two in the second half. They could take it inside on you. You could drive the lane. They can murder you with twos. Like, that's just what they do. Um, for anybody who, you know, is sitting there saying, you know, well, I feel like I and, and, I, and I feel like I feel like Boston has a. Uh. I feel like Boston has a legit chance to beat the Warriors because of size and length. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, um, them being inexperienced in the championship level when it comes to the NBA finals, I feel like the Warriors could take it there. Um, again, I just feel like it's a game of thrones, man. The Yankees are my Yankees are off to a high start, you know, um, the Lakers are, you know, they had a rough year, but it's, it's the, the Packers are looking to build with defense and they should have been doing that. But whatever, um, you know, that's just what it's about. It's a game of thrones. The Warriors have been a, a, a atop the throne for a long time. You know, they have run the Western Conference for a long time and it looks like they're making their second round and running it again. Um, you don't have to like it. It's OK. You don't have to like it, but you should respect it. You should respect it. And here's why. Regardless of what you felt they couldn't do, three-point shooting team can't win a championship. They, they killed that narrative. You can't win without a big man. They killed that narrative. They just, they had enough size. Like, you, you can't win without a dominant big man. Well, clearly, Steph Curry changed the game where he took the big man out. Well, that We know that. It is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think what else did they say. You can't win with Draymond Green being your defensive anchor. That narrative has been shattered, you know. Um, when Mark Jackson came out before Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson even started playing together and saying they were greatest shooting backcourt that he has ever seen, or the great, I'm sorry, the greatest shooting backcourt that has ever played this game, and everybody said he was crazy. Clearly, they killed that narrative. Um, Jordan Poole put it into work over the summer. Jordan Poole has become uh part of the three-headed monster that golden state has with curry thompson and now pool so 
I just don't understand. You know, when people say, well, I'm tired of seeing Golden State win. I'm tired. Of, you know, turn your TV off. You know, you're tired of seeing the Lakers win. They, I mean, I don't like the Patriots, but if the Patriots went to another uh, Super Bowl, it is what it is. I respect the championship pedigree. I respect that. If I don't like it, I don't have to watch it. Tom Brady will seven Super Bowl rings. If I don't want to see Tom Brady win another ring, I just won't watch it. I respect the man's championship DNA. You got to get that out your system. You got to get the hate out your system. I'm tired of seeing them win. I'm just, man, that's crap. That's, that's just crap. Um, shout out to the Warriors going up 3 0. Um, I know a lot of people thought Luka could. I know a lot of people said Luka and Mavs and six, whatever the case may be. The, the record is 146 and 0 when the team is up 3 0. Um, really don't see that breaking there because this means the Mavericks will have to beat Golden State four straight times. Don't see that happening. Now, with that being said, I feel like Dallas needs to kind of retool a little bit, just a little bit, and um, get Luka some help. I think in Dallas Mavericks history, I believe I saw this stat last night on TNT. Most 40-point playoff games for Dallas, Dirk Nowitzki was seven. Luka, I think he's now tied with seven. Or eight. And then I think Orlando Blackman is, is on that list as well with two. Dirk is six and one with that. In the playoffs. I think it's just the playoffs. Dirk is six and one. So Luca might have eight. And I think he's two and six. So when Luca scores scores 40 in a playoff game, they're two and six. And that's there's a reason for that. Luca holds the ball a lot. Plays a lot of ISO ball. Um Dallas needs to find I don't know if they want to roll with Brunson as the backcourt mate, you know, the for for Luca, but I think they need to find a point guard to help control what they're doing and take the ball out of Luca's hand. But Luca is a ball dominant. Um oh wow, I'm losing my voice, excuse me. Luca is a ball dominant, you know, player. It's just what he does. He he held the ball a lot um yesterday. And that's just what he does. You know, and that's that's just how his game is. And I don't, I just don't know if, you know, Dallas can win with that recipe. But it, but if you're the others and you're at home, you know, Dallas players have to step up. Uh, Finney Smith played 42 minutes. He had nine points. Reggie Bullock played 40 minutes. He was 0 for 10, zero points. Powell, he only played eight minutes, three points. Um, Brunson, 37 minutes. He had 20. Luca, of course, 40 minutes. He had 40. Keebler, 0 for 5, 0 points, 25 minutes. Bertans, 1 for 3, 2 points. Spencer Dinwiddie, 32 minutes, 7 for 13, 26 points. You know, and you don't know what you're going to get from Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie's so up and down. But again, Dinwiddie has not been here. So, it's, it's, it's a learning experience for Dallas. I feel like they have now... Jason Kidd is a hell of a coach, and I think he's a really good coach, and I think they'll be back contended for, you know, um, the Western Conference, you know, as far, I don't know, as far as next year, but we've seen this movie before. Once Golden State hits the stride, you know, they, they remind me of the Spurs, just with a better, just with more weapons, you know, but once Golden State hits the stride, we know what that means. So for anybody thinking this is a one and done, even if Golden State wins the finals, if they make it to the finals, win the finals, and they feel like, well, Golden State's old, they're not. No, they, re, they retool with youth. Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Moses Moody, Jordan Poole. Um, they, they got something. I know he's not young, but they got something with Otto Porter. Um, Kevon Looney's still doing his thing. You know, it's, it's, it's really... You know, I think with Andrew Wiggins is only 27. Uh, Kevon Looney's 26 with all this championship experience. You know, so understand what this is, man. It's a game of thrones. We're not competing for a playoff burst. We're not competing competing for 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 pennants. You know, in the in the baseball, we're not competing for that. We're not competing for Western Conference final appearances in 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 the Stanley Cup or in the uh, NBA. 
not competing for NFC championships if you're in the NFL. It's not what we're competing for. We're competing for championships. You know, that's that's what it's about. It's about championships, you know, and um, that's that's what it's going to always be about. And if it's and that's not, if that's not what your mindset is, you know, then I encourage you to expand your thought process because that's what it should always be about. This is Stephen Hayes podcast. Thank you for listening. Again, you can comment, question, talk about what you didn't like, whatever the case may be. Hello at the shpod.com. And I guarantee you I'll respond. If you want me to respond on the next episode, I'll do that. But send them. We'll get them. I'll respond. Appreciate you for listening. I'm out.